the east-west road in River State. This is a road that commuters say would take them about 10 minutes on a regular day to cross over to other River Rhine communities in Bialsa and even Delta State. But today, they say it takes them about three hours to cross over. And normally, they would spend about 200 naira going through. But today, at least 2,000 naira is what they have to part with before they get to their destination. But the impact of the flooding on this road is not limited to that because even the children instead of being in school, are here hunting for fish so they can feed. I need you to just Let's for close to a month, schools in flooded communities are closed and the classrooms converted into camps for displaced persons. Children forced to sleep on the floor. Mothers searching for how to feed their children. And helpless fathers looking and hoping Help will come soon. I'm from this community, and I get big shop. As this flock come now, both my big shop when I get, don't collapse. He bought our house, oh, they water now. Don't fall finish. Even if, if we toss them, they will come out here. We will go back and go now, as I talk now. No, they are me with five children for hand. And my children are since there. They don't go to school again. The thing we need now, we go to go, go, they help us. Now, medical checkup, where they go check us uh -huh, to give us medical. Because school don't enter, but mosquito, they bite us. So I put myself in the hand of God. My house is no thing, I have no any clothes for that. I come with safety of my life. All my property destroyed. And that notwithstanding, and this moment this way, my most important my life is my leg. Nigeria is experiencing what experts describe as the worst flood disaster in over 40 years. Some states, especially coastal ones where water flows into the River Niger, Africa's third largest and longest river and the Benue River, are no strangers to such problems. In February, the Nigerian Meteorological Agency issued a warning that due to the impact of climate change, over 13 states would be impacted. Unfortunately, not much was put in place to prevent the looming disaster. How many drivers are there? Yes, how many will stop? It can cross over now. Look at the forest there. Nigeria governments are bad. Look at the war. They are very wicked. Wicked. They are bad. Maybe a lesson they want to do again. More than 600 lives have so far been lost, thousands injured, and about 1.3 million people displaced, and hundreds of thousands of houses, as well as vast tracts of farmlands destroyed. The unprecedented damage has been attributed to numerous factors. All the factors are responsible for this devastating flood, but the root cause of it is climate change. The engineering negligence and the lack of commitment in managing water resources. Hydro resources in Nigeria is also a factor. While I would agree with you that um, climate change is also a root cause of um, the flooding that we're experiencing, but it's not the sole cause of it. Um, in 1982, the Lagro Dam was built in Cameroon, and there was an agreement by the Nigerian government to build a twin-sized dam that would accommodate twice as um, uh, much um, water that would be released from the Lagro Dam. But 40 years after, it has not been done. So I would say that the flooding is being caused by the negligence and the lack of preparation by the Nigerian government. As Africa's biggest economy grapples with the devastation, neighboring Cameroon opened its Lagda Dam to ease water pressure on its side of the border along the Benue River. To serve as a buffer, Nigeria was supposed to complete the Dancing Hausa Dam, but that is not finished despite promises made decades ago. The release of water in 2012 caused devastating flood and it became a threat to food security. By 222, where, where we are, it has repeated as a recurring decimal. I won't be surprised if this happens again next year and the year after, um, because we, have, we don't have enough early warning signs put in place, signs put in place. I need the Nigerian government to step up to the, um, the game to make provisions for infrastructure that can um, accommodate such floodings. You know, make sure that these um, infrastructures are put in place in adequate time. 
In Ewet, Akwaibom State, the impact of climate change and the devastation is evident. For these women, their source of livelihoods have been destroyed. This farm, we are not the people that own it. We are renting money to produce, to farm this, uh, to plant this thing. So as this, uh, as this time, this uh, problem that we have here, they stop us not to do this farm again. We don't have root because of the, 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 the flood. My own farm is down there. So when the erosion started, I had about 15 beds down there. And the whole thing was flooded, the whole 15 beds gone. We don't have root. We don't have anything. We suffer here for this our environment. Please, I want government to come and help us. Look at that um, house, the hotel there. I'm working there. I'm working there as a security. So that the hotel now is for the woman has just moved out, moved out us. Now I don't have work. Then I enter farm to come and farm. I don't see road. I beg government to come and help us. In 2022, the number of out-of-school children in Nigeria has risen to 20 million. Well, that's according to the latest report by the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization. And for this young girl here in the ITP camp, her dream of becoming a nurse is almost dashed. I'm not going to school because of the flood. The flood has spoiled my books and my properties. So they, they, they told us that we should come to the campus to come and stay. But the camp here, we don't feed fine. Mosquito is biting us and we don't sleep well. I'm worried about my education. Connected Development is raising questions about the funds dispersed. What happened to the new MAP project supported by the World Bank? The first was over $500 million, and then there was additional $400 million, and then federal government invested over $300 billion uh, that, in, that 23 states are benefited from. You know, coming here and seeing the impact of erosion and the flooding, I, I beg to wonder, where are all this money and what has this money delivered on? And as the 2023 general election draws closer, Nigerians are looking forward to voting a leader who they say has to be passionate about them. Others whose hope have been dashed are not so optimistic about the polls. Are we going to vote for the devil where they did? Vote for Lucifer. Eh? And look at the masses that are dying. Yes, I will vote. If the president that will come will be the good president to us, now we are sober. No food for us to eat, no money, no anything that we can take care of our children, even our uh, 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 to protect ourselves. There is nothing that we can we use to do it. So if the next president will care for us, we will vote for him. The person that is coming up to be our next leader. So his attitude, his response to our yearnings and uh, his relationship with us mm. is what will make me vote. I will vote for the next coming election. In 2012, we had one of the worst flooding in Nigeria. In 2022, over 10 years after 2012. What this has taught us is our government, our leaders, never prepared. Because if they had invested and prepared and built resilient, we wouldn't be experiencing this level of devastating flooding. And as we go into elections, I think as citizens and as electorate with our permanent voters card, we should reflect where would Nigeria be or go to if we make the wrong choices. Because what this means is we've made the wrong choices over the years, and we can't afford to make further wrong choices in 2023. And while they don't know where the next meal will come from, or where to call home, as their homes are still submerged or completely washed away, they are not giving up.
From the internally displaced persons camp in Ahoda River State, Amaka Dewalka, Parish News.